San Francisco Bay, one of the Earth's great estuaries, one of the finest natural harbors in the world. San Francisco Bay is obviously the most beautiful natural bay in North America. There's, there's nothing that has its, its scope, its beauty, and its setting. In 1961, California is about to become America's most populous state. While new, modern cities blossom all around the San Francisco Bay Area, the bay itself is a fetid waste. The bay was basically a cesspool. Raw sewage was being pumped into the bay. There was no sewage treatment. The shoreline was ringed with dumps, both actual official dumps that each city had and unofficial dumps at the end of each road where people would back the station wagon up and throw in the lawn chairs. And I remember my... Uh almost mother-in-law saying, well, it's a good thing they're filling in the bay because it stinks so bad. In a little over a century, one-third of San Francisco Bay is filled. 90% of its historical tidal marshes, the great mixing zones where life thrives, are gone. And plans are afoot to fill more. Massive suburbanization, landfills, bay filling to put houses, to put garbage dumps, to put office buildings, bridges crisscrossing, bringing freeways, the freeway network spreading around the bay to spread suburbia. In 1959, the United States Army Corps of Engineers publishes a straightforward administrative report forecasting developments to the year 2020. Saying that 70% of San Francisco Bay was shallow enough to be filled. If people could dredge up all the development plans for filling the bay, it would look like a river. By the second decade of the new millennium, the report predicts, the San Francisco Bay Area will be home to more than 10 million people, and San Francisco Bay itself, until now the nation's second largest estuary, will be all but gone. Absolutely nobody was looking at the bay as a whole bay, and each private owner, each city, each county was proceeding under the pressures of population growth and demand for flat land. Virtually everybody was sort of on a bender of, let's see if we can fill our part and we'll have more land for taxable development. Why didn't it happen? What stopped the seemingly irresistible force of urban growth? What spared San Francisco Bay? This is the story of saving the bay. A story of human impacts catastrophic and miraculous. A story of an estuary nearly destroyed, only to live again. When I look out and see the bay, I'm just so grateful that it's still there. For the first time on television, Saving the Bay traces the dramatic historical arc of land and water use in one of the great estuaries of the world. The bay is the central metaphor, the central narrative theme of the San Francisco Bay Area. You can't think of the development of this region without contemplating the bay. Produced in high-definition television and using state-of-the-art animation to recreate a world that was. Saving the Bay tells the story of the San Francisco Estuary in four one-hour episodes. Episode 1, Marvel of Nature, begins with the origins of the bay at the end of the last ice age. It was a place of tremendous fecundity. From the first people to inhabit its abundant shores, to Spanish missionaries and soldiers. I think they were surprised by the, the numbers of uh, indigenous peoples that they encountered from Russian and American fur traders to scientists glimpsing an unexplored world for the first time. And it was just a, a land of wonders and curiosities of redwoods, of big mountains, of grizzly bears, of whales, of huge things, of prodigious things. Marvel of Nature discovers a land of wonders changed forever. 
Episode 2, Harbor of Harbors, chronicles the sudden rise of San Francisco Bay onto the world scene. Bang! As Kerry McWilliams famously said, in California, the lights came on all at once. In a little over a year, a sleepy backwater, Yerba Buena, is transformed into an instant metropolis, San Francisco. The haste meant enormous waste and enormous destruction. It is the story of the rise of the industrial and agricultural empire in the West, of a once massive bay fishery and its ultimate demise, of the rise of the conservation movement in America, and how everything changed one fateful morning. Episode 3, Miracle Workers, enters an age of engineering wonders from 1906 to 1960. The finishing of California, the mending of California, the reassembly of California through engineering is going to be the great work, literally, of the 20th century. Entire rivers are rerouted and a vast watershed re-engineered. Water going out the Golden Gate was wasted water. It is the story of the conquest of the automobile, the decline of the largest ferry fleet in the nation, and the triumph of bridging the bay. They were engineering marvels, and they were engineering miracles, particularly the Golden Gate Bridge, which was practically built on the ocean, literally, on the floor of the, on the, floor of the ocean itself. It is a story of American industry, common women and men coming together in the nation's hour of need and the juggernaut of growth in the aftermath that transforms a place called the Valley of Heart's Delight into Silicon Valley. When books are written about sprawl, they use San Jose as the example. Episode 4, Save the Bay, chronicles the period from 1960 to the present and beyond. So we can see the, the trucks going down to the bay, filling it on a daily, hourly basis. It is a time when progress calls into question the Bay's very existence until a band of women join forces to save the Bay. These three women raise the awareness of everybody in the world about the value of this estuary. A time when a grassroots uprising transforms the conservation movement into mass environmentalism. This was a direct frontal assault on God-given rights of Americans and American institutions to do whatever they wanted with the land. And sets a new standard for coastal management around the world. It is, I believe, a milestone in our continuing efforts to preserve the quality of life, not only for this generation, but also for those who will follow us. We love the Bay Area, and so this is a great way to clean up the Bay Area and um, save the Bay and make it a, a healthy place for animals and children. Saving the Bay is a story of our own time and a story of days to come. The technology of satellite imaging, a very fast computers that can roll the landscape forward through geologic time, this understanding and the tools to envision the future beg us to take a look at what the future will be. From executive producer Ron Blattman and KTEH, Silicon Valley Public Television, the station that brought you Cadillac Desert, comes a new story of people and an environment. Go down to the edges of the bay. Look at how beautiful it is. Feel the breezes at nightfall. Look at the wonderful wildlife that lives there. A groundbreaking environmental history for public television. I think saving and preserving a great bay like San Francisco Bay is a great task for the future. The story of San Francisco Bay. I just hope that those that follow will share this, the same awareness of the bay so that they too will be able to continue the process of saving the bay.